How would you say your work today stacks up against the three Canadian teams you'll likely have to play in the playoffs? Uh, well, again, I think we addressed uh, an area of depth, which uh, is something that, uh, you know, you come into a situation like this and you're at the final time of uh, trying to add something. Um, you know, you're, you want to take care of a few things. We, you know, obviously uh, um, adding uh, Jordy gives us a, a player that uh, can play right side, can play left side, um, you know, competes real hard uh, and, uh, you know, is something, you know, someone that can, can add some, uh, some physicality and that to the, uh, to the lineup. Um, you know, obviously there's a, a lot of teams did some other things, but, you know, for, for yourself, um, you know, you, you look at uh, what's available in front of you, what, uh, what fits and, and, uh, you know, you make those moves accordingly. And we looked at a few other things that we tried to do a couple of other things today that, uh, um, you know, might've been some big swings, but, um, you know, the, the players that we, um, uh, targeted didn't move. I will go next to Jason Bell from the Winnipeg free press. Go ahead, Jason. Uh, Kevin, you kind of, uh, in, in the end of your answer, you kind of uh, alluded to what I was going to ask you, but is, is, is when you add a, a depth player like that, but, but don't really uh, alter the top, the, the starting six on your D cord, is that, is that an inability to improve there or a feeling that it just wasn't necessary? Well, I think that, uh, you know, somebody that I'd like to see uh, at some point in time here as well is Billy Hainola uh, get an opportunity to, uh, um, you know, to show where he does fit. So we think we have, uh, you know, some, some depth within the organization that, um, you know, is, is a little more than, than maybe what, uh, you know, some other people might think. But um, again, I, when you come into a trade deadline, you're, you're, you're sometimes victim to what, uh, what might be out there as well. Um, you know, I think I've said it before, we, um, you know, we have a, a good group of uh, guys on defense that um, I think have really good chemistry together. And I think that, uh, um, you know, so, some of the guys that, you know, have gotten an opportunity like Logan Stanley have, uh, have taken it and are continuing to get better. Um, the, the interesting thing is, is that, you know, we're, we're at a point in time here where we're 40 games in, which generally is, is the halfway point of a season where, uh, you know, players, like young players like Stan, um, you know, are only just kind of finding their way and, and uh, continue to get better and better. So I, I look at, you know, the opportunity that's in front of this group to continue to, uh, uh, to reap benefits of some of the younger players, you know, getting better and, and, uh, and getting an opportunity um, that should be beneficial to us moving forward. We'll go next to Ken Weeb from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Weaver. Kevin, uh, what role did the expansion draft play? And do you think that had an impact on some of the asking prices out there? Um, uh, yeah, I think, well, I think, you know, the expansion draft certainly came into a few, you know, different scenarios that, um, um, you know, were uh, of interest to us, but, um, uh, you know, again, it's, it's opportunity to, to try to, you know, do some things at a deadline. Sometimes the, you know, they, they do come to fruition. Sometimes they don't. Um, so again, it's, uh, it's not for, um, you know, it, it is what it is when it comes to, you know, those kind of, uh, situations. And we are faced with the, uh, with the expansion draft scenario that, um, you know, that, that, you know, could have come into play in a couple of things. We'll go next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Hey, Kevin, how would you describe the asking prices and how big of a barrier did they become in you making a move today? You no, know, the asking prices, you know, obviously they have and flow from year to year and, and what the market is, uh, you know, certainly we, uh, you know, we were prepared to, to be in the marketplace, uh, um, you know, with the prices and, and uh, you know, again, um, someone wins and someone doesn't get the player sometimes in, in, in different situations, but, you know, that's, uh, that's the hard part about uh, this, uh, this job is, is, um, you know, uh, you, you, you take your swings and, and uh, you go from there. Next to Sarah Lesky from TSN. Go ahead, Sarah. Hi, Kevin. Just wondering um, what the plan is now for Jordy. How soon will he join the organization and whether or not any of the restrictions and quarantines uh, will apply to him coming within, coming to the province? So we'll work on uh, work on the travel here shortly. Uh, I literally uh, just before I walked in here, got off the phone with Jordy. Got the trade call literally just uh, you know just completed. So um, I imagine there will be some uh, you know quarantine uh, um, protocol that uh, that will you know be applicable here, and, and uh, you know we'll work on that as soon as uh, as soon as I get moving. Over next to Mike McIntyre from the Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Thanks, Kevin. Uh, good afternoon. Um, 
this trade was announced pretty much at the buzzer, or I guess even after the buzzer. Can you just maybe take us through how close to the wire this one came? You mentioned maybe some other swings you were trying to take. Was this kind of a buzzer beater in, in the sense? Yeah, it, it came down right at the last minute, um, you know, to the point where, um, you know, I wanted to make sure that, you know, before it even started confirming the leaks out there that somehow get uh, get out there that, um, you know, that it was something that made it under the wire. Let's go next to Murata Tesh from the Athletic. Go ahead, Murat. Um, when you mentioned sort of the some of the younger players, Billy Haina, Logan Stanley, step forward, um, is there a sense at all that, in sort of evaluating your window, you're kind of looking to what they can contribute, whether it's this year, even next year, does that come into an impact into how you think about your moves today? I'm, I guess I'm not sure I understand, but I, I think I'll take a stab at it. Like, you know, again, I think that, you know, Billy, you know, he's been a, a little bit of, a, of a, a victim of some circumstances here with respect to, you know, the taxi squad being up here. Um, you know, sometimes you're, uh, you're here, but you're not, uh, um, you know, not in the lineup because of the way we've had to travel with COVID and, and the different travel restrictions are there. But we think Billy can step right in and play, um, you know, when the opportunity presents itself. Uh, and I think uh, that Billy, uh, you know, will, will, will have a very short, you know, learning curve in that. He stepped right in, um, you know, last year as, as uh, even with less experience and, uh, um, you know, uh, proved that he can, uh, he can step in and, and uh, he's that much, you know, stronger, that much more of a pro um, and, um, you know, again, I, I think that, uh, you know, when the opportunity, uh, does call on him, he's, uh, he, he'll take it and, and, uh, and, and, uh, and flourish with it. Next to Scott Billick from the sun. Go ahead, Scott. Thanks, Gregor. And, and hello, Kevin. Um, just, uh, just, uh, I guess my question is, it, it, do you feel after, you know, the move you made to, do you have a defensive core that, that can compete for a Stanley Cup? I think we have a defensive core that, uh, you know, certainly, you know, has, uh, has more depth here today. Uh, we have some internal depth and I think that, um, again, you know, from, from our perspective here, this D, um, I think is going to get better as, as guys like Stan, uh, you know, do improve. And I think that, uh, again, you've seen how this group, um, you know, has, is probably greater than the sum of its parts. And, and, uh, we've gotten to this point where, um, you know, we, we are, you know, challenging on, on any given night. There's uh, the jockeying for positions, uh, you know, in this division. And, and uh, you know, we think we're right there. Next to Sean Reynolds from Sportsnet. Go ahead, Sean. Kevin, you talked about some big swings that you were taking. And in the end, those players didn't end up getting moved. Um, one, uh, I'm assuming that those were maybe some players that, that, uh, that were longer term solutions for the team. Um, and two, what can you tell us about, why those deals didn't close? Um, so the, I guess the answer to the first question is there was mold, there was different terms, you know, some were um, longer term, some weren't. Um, and, you know, as far as ultimately in the end, why they didn't uh, get moved, that, that would be something that the teams would have to, uh, you know, tell you why they, why they didn't get moved. I'll go next to Paul Friesen from the Sun. Go ahead, Paul. Thanks. Uh, we often hear the term uh, that a GM is sending a message to his players uh, with an acquisition that we're all in. Uh, what, what message did you send to your team today? Well, I think, uh, you know, again, we, we made a big trade earlier in the year, and I think that that trade has helped strengthen us, uh, you know, as a team. Um, and again, I think the players uh, have gotten to this point uh, together as a group. I think it's a real strong group. I think that uh, we sent, uh, you know, the message that, um, you know, we, we added some depth that, uh, that that can help us as we move forward here. Um, in the uh, in the remaining games and into the into the playoffs, and it you know it also sends a message that um, you know the group that, that we have here we believe in you because uh, again we didn't uh, you know we didn't break it apart, uh, and uh, you know we we think that uh, you know the, the group that you know got us to this point deserves to uh, to to continue to get rewarded and continue to play. Just a couple more for Chevy. We'll go next to Mike McIntyre from the Free Press. Go ahead, Mike. Kevin, just to follow up on, on whether it's Billy or Dylan Sandberg or somebody else, Sammy Niku, the idea of using <clears throat> these last 15 games, you're in a position, obviously, you have a big sort of buffer, uh, you know, a playoff spot. Would you like to see the organization maybe use these this last month to try some of those other combinations, get, get, get some different looks? Can you experiment a little more, I guess, given your current position? 
Well, I think, you know, again, that opportunity might present itself. It hasn't uh, been something that I've, uh, you know, sat down and, and talked with Paul, but, um, you know, at the end of the day, we'll, we'll take a look at everything. We are, we are now bound by some roster restrictions uh, with respect to the four recall rule. Um, again, it, it becomes very, very tricky. Uh, we are bound. Uh, we must still have a taxi squad, um, you know, so that, that situation there. But, you know, again, the four recall rule is something that, uh, again, once you use that recall, then that player is, it basically has to stay. Um, so again, we'd like to, you know, get all our players playing some sort of games here at some point in time. That's a priority, whether, you know, it's guys eligible to play in the American league, uh, we'd like to get them playing some games, uh, or if it's, uh, giving some opportunities, uh, you know, to some players in the national hockey league, we'll see how that goes. And final question to Murata Tash from the athletic club, Murata. Gregor, uh, Kevin, I wanted to ask you about the player you acquired too. I mean, in our scramble to get as much information as possible after it's announced, it looks like, you know, some left side time, some right side time, different results depending on who he's playing with. Uh, what can you tell us about you know, him as a player and what makes him appealing in this? In the well, world? I think, again, I think the, um, uh, the ability to play, you know, uh, either side gives, uh, you know, the coaches an opportunity to have a, a player that, uh, again, you know, is, is, they know is comfortable to, uh, to, you know, if a guy on the right side, if they want to put him in uh, and try something different uh, with a righty or a lefty, you know, that's, that's something that, you know, flexibility um, in a depth, uh, a depth type of situation is, is good. Um, you know, he's a, a, a player that, uh, said competes hard. Um, you know, he's a pro he's, he's got a lot of games under his belt and, and a lot of experience, um, that, uh, I think, uh, you know, will be, uh, will be helpful, um, as you know, the games, you know, get uh, a little more intense and a little more rugged. Um, you know, again, he's a big body that, um, uh, you know, is not afraid to, uh, you know, to, to play that way as well.